The following video will describe how to assemble the bronchoscopy and foreign body setup and will be explained by Dr. C. The things you'll need are the video tower, the Hopkins and foreign body telescopes, a bronchoscopy tray, the foreign body instrument tray, and the camera and light cords. To find these things in the children's hospital, proceed to the operating room. The towers should be in operating rooms two or three. If they're not there, check the storage room that's located right down the hall from the main entrance. To find the instruments, enter the OR core and go to the back wall by ORs two and three. You'll see against the back wall a shelf of foreign body scopes as well as bronchoscopy sets. This is where you'll get the equipment you'll need. This slide illustrates the important equipment you'll need for a foreign body removal and bronchoscopy, and the following video will walk you through the assembly and the relevant materials. Okay. Okay. So this is a bronc setup, and these are all the little bits and pieces that come out, and you need to know how these things fit together. So we'll start with the bronchoscope. Uh, and it, this is the working end. It has these different channel ports. And uh, this is for suction, this is for the light, this is for a light prism which we currently use as a plug, and this is for the ventilation. And so you need to know where these things go. So the ventilation thing goes here, tubing goes here. This is a, um, a light prism that actually acts like a plug for our purposes. It has, um, it has two notches here so that the position can go in all the way or out one notch. When it's in all the way, if you can see, can you see in the lumen of that? Yeah. The, the light drops into the channel there and will illuminate the bronchoscope. So in the old days, that's how we used to use the bronchoscope. You can see if you pull it up into the first position, that light disappears. So when we use this prism as a plug, the, it has to be in that first notch because if it's not in the first notch and if it's down like this, it will not allow the telescope to enter the channel. And so we want that in the first notch and, uh, and then it serves to block any leak. So then we want to put the port on this suction um, channel and you'll notice that this is the suction cover and it has a little um, excrescence here, a little bump here. Uh, and this lines up, it's unfortunately eccentrically placed. It's not in the midline. And this is eccentrically placed. And so it's designed so that the zero goes with a zero here. And, or this bump, if, you're, if you can't see it, you can feel the bump and the bump goes into this notch. So you can just put it on and it will click into place. Some people like to do this thing where they will put it on any which way and then rotate it until it clicks. That works too. And what that does is it ensures that the holes are lined up so when you feed the flexible suction down, it's all going to um, go straight into the bronchoscope. And then we like to put a plug over that so that you won't get too much uh, leak, air leak. And then the final bit is the channel through which you will illuminate and, and look down the bronchoscope. And so there are a couple ways to do that. The simplest way is what we call the window. And so that um, prevents any leakage and allows you to look down the bronchoscope, but there's no magnification. In order for you to use the bronchoscope with this, you need to push the light down and illuminate uh, the bronchoscope. It's not something we do very commonly, but can be very useful if kids are decompensating and you need to take a quick look. Um, the, um, the other option is the locking mechanism, which is, um, which is this device. And it has two ends, the wider end which comes onto here. And you can see that there's a notch, or there's a little tube that sticks into that lumen, and that goes into this notch. So that clicks in like this. And uh, in this situation, the, there's a nubbin that sticks up superiorly and then one 90 degrees to the right. Then this portion of the locking mechanism swivels. 
And so when it's off to the left, it's in the unlocked position. And then you put your telescope in, and the telescope is designed so that the light prism goes up. The light cord attachment to the telescope goes up at the same direction with the light prism. So the lights all go in the same direction. And then to lock it, this comes up, and then every all this is uh, all these nubs are facing uh, superiorly. And so that way you know it, it's uh, whoops, sorry, it's locked. Um, and the the issue with that is that you're kind of committed to having the scope in or out. And um, so if you're doing foreign body work and you want to be able to remove the telescope and place the for optical forceps, then it's more convenient oftentimes to have the um, this diaphragm. And so, um, so there's yeah, one there's edge a... that has a lip on it, and that accommodates this rubber diaphragm. So you push that on, and that clicks in, and then this fits into, into this port. There's no, this is all round, and there's nothing that needs to be oriented properly. So that just goes in. And then, um, and then you can use the foreign body telescope. So the foreign body telescopes are then also designed so that the in the unlocked position or open position, this knob is pointing to the left. Then you put the telescope in again. So the telescope goes in and you always know that it should go in with the light connection 180 degrees from the handle. And then to lock it, you, you rotate this superiorly. And so then everything uh, is again pointing superiorly when it's in the locked position. And so then you can use your bronchoscope and you should know also that the bronchoscope is oriented so that the light prism or light attachment aligns with the long end of the bevel of the bronchoscope. And so then you can know just by feeling the bronchoscope where your bevel is because some people like to put the bronchoscope in so that the long end of the bevel is oriented towards the anterior commissure. Others like to uh, insert it so that the long end of the bevel is to the right or the left. Basically, you just don't want to introduce it so that the bevel is posteriorly um, because the soft tissue will tend to collapse on you. So either way, but then you can understand how your bronchoscope is oriented and then you can insert your foreign body um, optical forceps in um, through the bronchoscope to retrieve the foreign body. Then, um, then you can take that out. The other thing that's really important for the setup, I think that sometimes people forget, is that you always want to make sure you have a section that's long enough to fit through the bronchoscope. And um, so when things get exciting, you don't want to be end up with a short suction that can't reach the end of the bronchoscope. So you just need to check that. There are two suctions in our bronchoscope sets. One is the open-ended typical airway suction, and these are the velvet tips that usually in adults, I think you think of using these for esophagoscopy. We, we also have these in our bronch sets, and sometimes they can be useful if you don't want the uh, open tip at the end. So I think that's it, right? Great.